So you've created something in Maya, you've animated your shot, and it's time to show it to the world, post it on social media, or at least show it to your mentor and get some feedback. Whatever the case may be, whatever you're doing with it, it's time to make a movie file. Now, you have two options, and you may already know this, but you can render it or you can play blast it. Now, rendering usually takes longer. There are a lot of really cool technologies now that you don't have to make it take all that long at all, but regardless, it takes more technical expertise than play blasting. So let's just do that. And honestly, play blasting really looks great most of the time. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to prepare your animation for play blast, make sure everything visually is gonna look good on the other end. I'll show you a few camera tricks to make sure you are maximizing the amount of space in your play blast. If you have done it before, you know that there's like that box where you can see your shot and then there's like borders outside your shot. No one wants that. Everyone else is gonna be a lot happier to watch your work because of these changes. So by the way, if you're new here, hi, I'm Sir Wade and I do a ton of animation stuff here on the channel. So subscribe if you haven't already and ring the bell so you get notified of new uploads because there's a lot of good ones coming out soon. And links below to Twitch where I'm live three days a week doing animation stuff live. If you have questions, wanna talk about this kind of stuff or if you want to support the channel, I'll link to Patreon as well where I do animation tutoring, you can vote on videos, ton of cool stuff. But for now, let's play Blast. Jumping into Maya. So here's a fun little animation just so I'd have something to play blast. Obviously I didn't do anything with his face. It's fun, I like it. Quick side note, every month I'm now doing animation challenges over on my Discord, which is free to join. It's just a big animation hub for you to come, find resources, talk to people, join the community. Link below to the Discord as well. This month's theme was projectile. So I did this as an example. Now, if you are just starting out with animation, if you are a student and you just started going to an animation school and you're, you're just about to share your work for the first couple of times, right? A few quick things for you that we've all dealt with and we've all had to overcome don't have anything selected when you do your play blast because if you can see it in your viewport you're going to see it in the final video file so if I have this character's geometry selected like this you're going to see all that mesh grid stuff in the video file and nobody wants that so just make sure you don't have anything none of your set don't have anything selected now beyond that to keep prepping our animation for play blasting you may want to turn off other things in the scene such as these control curves so being able to turn these off is gonna just take a little bit of the clutter out of the scene. The hotkey as of Maya 2020 is Alt-1 on the keyboard. But if you don't have Maya 2020, you go to the show menu, which by the way, if you are using multiple viewports, it is independent to each one of these windows and turn off NURBS curves. That's usually what's gonna turn off those rings. Also, if you were going to export like a walk cycle or a wall bounce or something from an orthographic view and you have this crazy grid, uh, you can turn that off with the grid button. It's right here. It's, it looks like a waffle and you can just turn that off in all of these or some of them. You can also go to the show menu and at the very bottom there is a grid toggle. So by the way, if you are newer to Maya and hitting spacebar and jumping into a specific viewport like I'm doing here, it's wherever your mouse is focused that will maximize whatever panel your mouse is over. If that freaks you out because you're like, ah, spacebar doesn't hit play, what kind of cruel world is this? You can change the hotkey. I've just gotten used to it being Alt V. So Alt V is start and stop playback inside of Maya. Just in case you didn't know that, now you do. And by the way, I have Maya tips videos that have a whole bunch of good little snippets like that. In case you haven't seen them, super helpful if you are animating a Maya. And also, if you are trying to clean up your viewport and you have more advanced stuff in here, locators, lights, image planes, maybe a deformer or two, whatever it is, you can turn all of that off in the show menu. So you can go through here and you know find image planes, we'll turn that off. You can turn off lights, locators, all those things can be individually toggled. Or for a faster way to do it, you can usually just say show none and then re-enable polygons or alt two. That's usually gonna give you just the character meshes. Let's do some visual improvements to make this look better. So what you wanna do is come up to this button towards the top left of whatever panel you're in. You wanna find this square with a little blue circle, it's called your resolution gate. Click on that and it will show you the resolution up at the top that you are gonna be rendering in, which you may wanna adjust, we'll get to that. The camera down at the bottom that you're in and you can kind of see the border of what's in the screen. So you may want to adjust and reframe accordingly. Make sure you're maximizing the space. There's no reason to have this so far out if there's nothing happening in all this. Let people actually see your character and all the work that you've put into it. Now I'm gonna come back to some camera settings, but first I wanna show you how to make this visually look more like a render. Maya has a tendency to pixelate all of the edges. You've probably seen this before, you've probably experienced it. All of the edges are just very aliased, I guess is the technical word for it. What we can do is go up to renderer, Viewport 2.0, that's what we're using to look at everything and go to this option box. That is gonna give us some options and there are a few we wanna change. The first one that you always wanna mess with is anti-aliasing. Drop that down, turn on multi-sampling and crank it up as high as you can go. You don't probably wanna animate with this setting turned on because it's gonna slow things down, but for your play blast, what it's gonna do, I don't know if you can tell, is it's actually smoothing out all of those edges just on our character's geometry. So that's gonna make this look 
a lot more polished. Uh, screen space ambient occlusion, if you enable this, it's going to generate kind of self-generated proximity shadows for your character. So I can crank up or down the amount, and you can see it gets a little too aggressive at some points, but it does give you a sense of depth for a lot of things in your scene. A few other touches you can do. There is a motion blur option. I do not recommend turning this on for most cases. If you are trying to fake a render, then sure. But if you're trying to get animation feedback, like if you're submitting this to a school or whatever, don't do motion blur. You're probably gonna get critique and feedback on this work and a motion blur is going to hide a lot of your animation. There is one more thing that I don't think I've ever showed in a video before and that's hardware fog. This is pretty cool. I'm not gonna mess with these settings yet because what I need to do first is go up to shading and turn on hardware fog. What that does is just gray out our whole screen. Don't panic though. What we need to do is adjust the start and end sliders. And what it gives you is this like hazy fog. I can use the hardware fog to bring focus to certain areas of my shot. And as the camera moves, you can see that it's simulating depth. This will slow things down. You don't want to animate with this on, but again, for preview purposes, it could be kind of cool. And you can adjust the color. And so remember to turn that on and off. It's not in the hardware settings. You can adjust it here, but it's in shading hardware fog. So but yeah, the big two are anti-aliasing and screen space ambient occlusion. Those are the two main ones are going to make this look like a render. Also, you can add shadows to your viewport. That's gonna make a really big difference, especially if you're doing a walk cycle or really anything body mechanics. You wanna make sure that you can see the contact point. So I do have a video showing how to add a quick three-point lighting setup to your Play Blast to make things look really nice. Check that out. I'm not gonna get into the lighting in this video because I've already covered it. You can't really tell if his fingers are actually on the button. So if I go up to lighting shadows, I can actually enable shadows in the viewport. Now there are a few more things to cover. On one hand, we have the camera side of this, making sure that we don't have a weird border around our play blast. We'll get to that in a second. But first I wanna show you a few potential problem points you could run into. So the first one is when you actually go to play blast, you have different settings on a Mac or a Windows computer. A few ways to play blast, you can be in the animation menu set and up at the top there is a playback, play blast, and then there's an option box. I've literally never clicked on this one because I just do it from the timeline. You make sure your timeline matches whatever the length of your shot is that you need, and you right click in the timeline. You'll see play blast down here. It's the exact same thing as in the menu, whatever's more convenient for you. And you hit the option box. You need to make sure you click this option box to enable the proper settings. So this is the default settings if you're on Windows. Now this is the big one. You wanna change the format from AVI in a lot of cases to QuickTime, to QT. A lot of computers have an issue with AVI. You, you may not be able to upload it properly to your review site of choice or bring it into a certain piece of software. Sometimes it just gets weird and I have a lot of people message me asking that question. So I always recommend you export to a QuickTime format. If you do not see this in your computer, Windows users, it's because you haven't installed QuickTime on your computer. QuickTime is no longer supported by Windows. It's no longer like security being updated, whatever. But this is a reason that you should just go grab it. Get it from the reputable like QuickTime website. Don't get it from some weird virus place. <laughs> and once you install it, close and reopen Maya, you should have this in here, it should be fine. This gives you the right codec to be able to export in whatever format within a QuickTime wrapper. The next thing we wanna do is change the encoding from PNG. Scroll up and change it to H.264. And I've seen a lot of people not mess with quality. I don't know, I just, I just go to 100, but you could probably leave it if you need a smaller file size. I don't know. Now, when it comes to the display size, this is where it gets funky. Depending on your particular monitor that you're using and what computer you're using, if you're on a laptop or whatever, display size from window will just kind of go with whatever you have on your screen, your resolution. It's not super reliable and it's gonna give you weird sizes. If you have a small screen versus a 4K monitor, you're gonna get very different file sizes that may be hard to upload. So my recommendation is either go to custom and then set it manually here and then scale, well, 100% of that, so one. That's one way to do it. However, you don't have a ton of control. I always go from render settings and I'll show you how to do that in just a second. The next thing is you need to make sure you turn on save to file because otherwise you just get a temporary file that when you close it, it gets deleted and you never have your video. I do highly recommend that you hit the browse button and you go pick a location for this file to go. And you do this every time you play blast. Here is one big problem that everybody runs into at some point or another. Let's just say you have your file, your Maya file that you've been working on and you've been saving. It's in this folder here. And then you play blast and you look in that folder and your play blast is just not there. It's not on your desktop, it's not in your downloads and it's not anywhere you would think it should be. And eventually you may find it in C, user, your name, documents, Maya, project, default. It's all, it's, it's somewhere stupid. No one ever wants it there. The reason it does this is because you haven't set your project. Most likely you haven't set your project and that's why it's just going to its default directory in your documents folder. So if you are 
running into that, that's where they're going. They're going to your your main documents, my documents folder, Maya projects default movies. You're welcome. But to change that, we're gonna wanna set our project. First of all, you can change just where it's going by hitting browse, setting it, and then hitting okay, and then you hit play blast, and then it'll run through and it'll work just fine. But either way, you wanna make sure you go file, set project, use your project window and your set project. This will allow you to kind of set and tell Maya, hey, I'm not working in that default directory, I'm working in a new directory. If you want more details on that, it's in the Maya tips video. So again, go check that out. I won't bore you with it here. Now, if I go ahead and run a play blast with all those changed settings, you'll see a quick little preview of what we're gonna get, and then it'll try to open the file. If for any reason your computer's like, can't play the file, not supported, it's probably just the default player doesn't know how to deal with that file, but in VLC, it'll work fine. I like that, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, it gets weird. But regardless, you can see here that it has a border and we don't like the border. So let's let's fix that and let's also just fix the resolution because it's, it just doesn't look that great. It's very low res. The first step is to go to our render settings. It's the film slate with the little gear next to it. We can change the renderable camera and you wanna make sure that you actually tell it to use the specific camera that you want. For presets, we can just change the resolution to HD 720 or HD 1080. Let's just go full 1080. Device aspect ratio, copy this number. This is the part that gets slightly technical, but I promise it's not that bad. I'm gonna select the camera that I wanna render from or play blast from. To select this camera, I'm gonna click the camera icon in the top left corner of this panel. I'm gonna make sure I'm in the attribute editor. So if it looks like this on the right, hit control A and it'll jump to look like this. You can change your focal length. You can change all of your camera settings from here. But there's a few that we specifically want to mess with. If ever you're getting weird artifacting, like you're zoomed out or something, and maybe your character's doing this, I'll do this to really show you. Make the near clip plane bigger. So, you know, change whatever it is to 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.5, something like that should fix your problem. If it's happening to your background elements, things are disappearing in the background, things are too far away, increase at a zero to the far clip plane. Now, remember we, the, we copied that number, where do we put it? You need to put it into film aspect ratio. So right here under the film back drop down, film aspect ratio, control V, command V or whatever you're using. Stick that in there. Now our camera is prepared to render at 1920 by 1080 with the proper aspect ratio in our play blast. If you need to reframe or do anything, go for it. And there's one more thing we want to do. But with the resolution gate, where it says fit resolution gate, you want to make sure you change this to overscan. And then what you want to do to make sure that it fills the screen completely, because again, this is what we're rendering. We're rendering the full everything we see here. We're going to look inside display options. And by the way, if you don't want the 1920 by 1080 at the top, you can turn on film gate and turn off resolution. It'll actually get rid of that. You can set the mask opacities and then change the overscan from 1.3 or whatever its default is to one. What it's gonna do is zoom in on the actual shot, that, that square border of your shot. It's gonna get rid of the, the outer border. There is one more thing that you can adjust to not have to like deal with, keep switching all these settings back and forth, back and forth. And that is you can go to the show menu where I've been messing with like all these things. If you wanna keep this stuff on, and you don't want to worry about remembering to like, oh, I forgot to you know turn that off or hide those. You can actually go to the show menu and go all the way down to play blast display. And you can turn everything off, except you know make sure you come back in and turn on polygons. But if you are going to use this play blast display, you need to make sure you check this box at the top. Very important, override viewport. Override viewport tells it that, hey, when you play blast, use this menu instead of this left menu. So. And here we go. Not only do we have a beautiful, clean, non-pixely edges, you know, it's not lit or anything, but it's a play blast that looks nice. It's 1080 and it's full screen. If you go to a regular college, a regular university, and you're uploading this to a professor and you're gonna show this in class, and you don't have some custom tool like Animation Mentor does or Sync Sketch or you know, Keyframe MP or something like that, you may wanna turn on Current Frame and then Play Blast. And what that's going to give you what that's going to give you is this little tiny frame counter in the very bottom right corner. That way, if you don't have a like a scrub player, something built for animation, and someone goes, oh, hey, uh, right here, I think you should make this change. They don't have to just say like, in this general area, when this is happening, and you're like, okay, I gotta make a note of that. You can actually look in the corner and say, ooh, frame 28, I need to make this change on frame 28. The only last thing to make this look good is to light it, to add a simple lighting setup to just make it look a little bit more appealing, to make it look a little bit more lively. And again, that's something that I covered in that other video, so I'm not gonna deal with it here. If you watch this and you watch that and you combine the knowledge of those two videos, you are set, your play blasts are gonna look amazing and you're going to get much better feedback from whoever's sharing notes with you because they'll be able to see what it is you did and you'll be able to see it better yourself while animating. 
If you found this helpful, please hit this button so more people see this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Again, if you wanna ask questions live, I am live three days a week down on Twitch. Links below for everything, animation tutoring on Patreon, all that good stuff. Anyways, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helps you. Share it with a friend, share it with classmates, anybody else who could benefit from it. And I will see you in the next video.